Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room. Well, this is the dies that was sent to me in that wonderful bead haul. These gorgeous candles and I am setting this card up so that these are three thick. So I'm using some of my glue and I'm gluing three of them on top of each other. It's very important because I need the thickness of that flame. You know those candles when you go into the Hobby Lobby and they have that flickering little thing on the top of those battery operated candles? Well that's the first thing I thought of when I received this die. I want to make those flickering uh, candle tops that when you turn on the candle you're going to see that gorgeous little flickering wick on the top. It's quite a unique card to make. I think I had to think out the process a little bit, but once I realized what I was going to do with those little flames to make them flicker when you move your card, it was just a joy to um, create it. So what I did is I just blew it dry, and here's the key to having the uh, flickering flame on the top. You want to cut and make those uh, candle... Um, flames you want to make them larger so take off about a sixteenth of an inch come right in and remove it because you're going to need some space so that that flickering flame can move and jiggle around so it looks like it's actually lit it is it is such a pretty card when it's finished I think you'll really enjoy making uh, something like this you're only going to end up using one of those uh, backdrops there where the guts are taken out. I did two of them just in case something happened. <laughs> I wanted to be prepared. So I'm cutting the flames off and the tiny little attachment that's on the bottom. You want to take that off as well. And we're going to use uh, gold stickles. I don't know if you're going to see that in there. And we're also going to use this beautiful... Uh, Art Impressions Roses um, stamp and I'm going to use the first mark. I love this die. It's so deeply etched. I, I just think it's gorgeous and I thought I would do the background like behind the candles with the beautiful roses because I thought you know what if you have candles on your dining room table it's always nice to have roses with it so the two of them kind of came together so I set it on top, made sure that the Versamark was very juicy, took a little bit of uh, tight red, really flimsy paper, and uh, I'm just patting it to make sure all of that um, sticky gets onto the cardstock. And this is my 120 pound cardstock I'm using here. And it worked out well. And then I'm going to take some, well, wow, <laughs> wow, detailed embossing gold. It is gorgeous. It's a deep, deep gold. I just love it. It has a, a real richness to it and I like the fact that it's detailed. So it just, uh, it doesn't, you know, spread itself when you put it on the card. It keeps right to the Versamark. So I think you'll really like it and it's made by WOW and I made sure I got all the spots here. I find when you do a vast area with a lot of concentrated lines, you want to make sure that you heat set it all over. Give it an extra uh, shot uh, up and down just to make sure everything melts. And it is just gorgeous. I really, really love the way this turned out. And it's subtle, but yet it makes a statement, don't you think? It's just gorgeous. And then when you set that a three layer candle piece that we put together there on the right hand side. It's going to be raised up and we're going to use quite a bit of product which makes it nice. We're going to use the black velvet brushes. I'm going to use the number six to paint on this beautiful Prima rose gold paint. And what I like about this paint is on white paper it comes out rose and I'll show you, see it comes out rose right there, but you don't need to use much water. The only reason you would use water to dip into the paint is if it got a little thick. So you just clean out your brush and start again. 
but when you put this on black cardstock, it's gold. It's crazy beautiful. So here I'm getting that effect of the beautiful rose color. Now, on the roses here, you don't want to do every spot on the rose. You want it to be truly subtle. So just skip a little bit, you know, skip a few petals and then paint a few petals. This way it'll give you some dimension and it'll pop the petals up in uh, variation. Here's the paint. You have one paint that has two colors in one jar. On black it's gold and on white it's rose. And it'll tell you the first color is what color is going to be on the white and the second mentioned color will be the color on black. And we're going to use the Pivot Gold Pen to color in the flames later on. Also want to take your acetate because it's going to also be a three sectioned shaker card. So cut into each flame because you don't want them uh, covered. You just want the candle itself covered and everything else below. And then we'll proceed to do the shaker. Cut that out because you need those little flames to flicker. So you need that space without touching any acetate. Now these are three thick. Remember we cut them off the top when we put the base together. So I put Stickles Gold on one side to be really, really sparkly. And then I put the gold pivot pen on the other side to have a dull tone. So when it shook back and forth to flicker, it had two different dimensions. This is extra fine gold thread. And you're going to add another flame tier on top of the three we had. So it'll be four thick so that you can put this fine gold thread through the middle. You're going to glue it, then add that other little flame on top. Then we're going to add the pivot gold to color it because that way we can color the sides. And it's very unique because this actually pivots and looks like one of those shaky flamed candles. I just love it. You know when you just have an idea when you see something? The, uh, I have one of those candles that has that flicky flame and they're kind of pricey, so I waited till it was on sale at Hobby Lobby. And I can't believe when you turn it on, it actually looks like you lit a candle because it flickers back and forth. It doesn't it, it just looks like it is actually waving flames. And so when I saw this die, that's the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> I just had to do it. Uh, I have walking pneumonia, can you believe it? And uh, I'm supposed to be on bed rest, but I just had to get this up for you because ever since I got that bead box and this was in there, this die, I had to do this, create this beautiful Christmas card. And I wanted to make it a shaker. Now, to add the flames to the top, you're going to figure out, do you want the dull side or the sparkly uh, stickle side showing on the other side? So I chose to do... Each side was the stickles, and then in the middle was the dull. So it just gave it some extra oomph when they started to shake. It wasn't all the same. And you want to take the thread and turn it over, get some scotch tape, tape the top down, but do not use the bottom thread. Make sure you cut that off as close to the base of that flame as possible. I just thought uh, it was easier to do it this way when you add it to the card. And look at, uh, can you see there how it is actually shaking? And when the card stands up, just the, just the a tiny movement of your hand flickers those flames on top of the candle. It is amazing. I was so pleased that this idea I had worked. I'm just going to show you, I think, in slow motion how I um, put the thread through the middle, then added the gold pivot pen around the edges. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? And I'm, I, you can see I'm not hardly shaking the card at all. It just worked out so well. I was really pleased with it. And uh, so here I'm just going to show you. I had an extra one. I thought I'd show you how to uh, add the thread in the center and you know, you see the gold flicky in the thread? Yes, gold flicky. And I don't know I have uh, names for these crazy things. 
and you just cut it right close and look at you put it in I'm just sure I saved this to show you um, uh, this it was already done but I backed up the edit so that you could see how this fit in and then you want to not have it touch completely at the top nor at the bottom because you're going to have double-sided tape so you need a little bit of more space on the bottom of that cutout flame and I'll show you that in just a minute I tried to get this uh, video edited down to 20 minutes, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> There's so many little things I wanted to show you in case you wanted to make a card like this. It doesn't have to be the same die pattern, but uh, you need to go around your shapes. And that's why it's a little bit detailed, but at the end, of the actual creation of this project it really does set it off it's worth the time you take to just do those little extra things to add to your card that will really make a statement I think and what you have to do here is cut that uh, roll of tape you're going to do it too high but you're going to have to cut some pretty thin areas and you'll see that when my uh, big hand gets out of the way there. I'm taking the first layer all off because I have to do it once more. But see how it's like a uh, looks like a little uh, street, <laughs> a little avenue. It's going around all the curves because you do not want to touch or go near the flames because it's sticky, right? And you don't want your little flames touching the sticky part. So it, uh, you have to cut very, very thin underneath the flames. You want a nice thin line and right underneath so that your dangly flame does not touch the sticky side of the double-sided tape. I hope I got all that in. I think as you see it here you can understand it as I'm putting the second layer up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so this walking pneumonia is having the best to me and not only that, can you believe it? I have a kidney infection. I have two things at once. I did go to the doctor, yes, and I'm on antibiotics and bed rest. <laughs> but I couldn't rest because I had to do this card for you. I just, I just had so much fun. Uh, you know, I actually sat doing it sometimes. I did happy, happy, stand and sit, stand and sit. But um, so here we go. Enough about me. Um, so now you have. See how why you can't have the acid tape touching. And you can see the stickiness underneath the flame. But you want those flames to be able to shake freely. You don't want it near any of the tape. And because we're doing a shaker, my friends, you want to make sure that you put as much tape sticking as close as you can so none of the little pieces uh, get out of the inside of the gut area that's, um, that we made. wanted to have three colors of glitter. I wanted to have silver gold and a deep lilac blue in the center. So in order to do that, you have to put a thin, thin strip on each side and then grab some acetate so you don't, none of this sparkle glitter gets in on the right or the left. Oh, sparkles. Tweet. <laughs> Real tweet. <laughs> oh, yes, I have to have a laugh. You know we have to have a laugh throughout my video. So if you set uh, acetate, a little piece on each side and start in the middle first because then your acetate will guard your two gullies. Then you can move it over and look at that. Now cover the other two with acetate and put your uh, silver, I think it's my gold, I'm putting yes. And you want to put quite a bit of um, the shaker guts there, uh, whatever you know, whether you use prills or you use glitter like this, it had heart stars and another piece. And now I'm measuring, I'm going to put a really large piece of acetate over this once I release it and be very, very, <coughs> excuse me, careful taking off this top la layer because you don't want the colors to contaminate each other. You want them to stay in their own little gully. And uh, so I was, you know, really careful getting it off and not touching any of the sticky. 
And quickly, I want to thank all my new subscribers. I want to thank Maggie and B, and um, I want to thank Michelle for doing their pages. Um, I'm going to get a hold of you ladies. I just thought of that while I'm doing this. And uh, thank you so much. And then you're going to take a larger piece. This is the way I like to do it. I take a larger piece of acetate, I drop it down, and that way I know it's going to be cut out and measured. And look at that. Isn't it just scrumptious? I just love it. I love the subtlety of the roses. I love that these little flickering flames actually flicker. Uh, it's amazing when something turns out. <laughs> and now we're going to use liquid embossing uh, Versamark. I love painting Versamark on. That way you don't uh, get any Versamark pad on areas you don't want to have. So you just uh, put some baby powder down, get your dollar store blush brush, cover it nicely, then clean it off. And now I'm looking for three colors of embossing powder. I used Silver Recollections, Wow Gold, Detail Gold, and then I used this blue purple I had made by Wow. So I started out the first candle with, I wanted to do three layers so it's nice and thick because see how it has that melted wax coming down? And if you melt it like this and then you put more of your liquid uh, Bursa Mark right there, just paint it on over top, then uh, put some more powder on it. Uh, if you can catch it while it's still wet, you don't have to add more of the embossing uh, Versamark, excuse me, the liquid Versamark. I always keep one of those handy. They're wonderful to paint onto projects that are detailed. And look at that. Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to do this with each of them so that they match the glitter that's inside. Um, so the candle wax part, the base, it's going to be the color that the sparkles and glitter on the inside. And look how you can paint it right down in and get that embossing powder really deep on all the edges. Uh, we love it. Yes, they do. Um, i got to add my little cutie birds. Yeah, it's close to midnight. You know I always add it close to midnight. And there's that blue-purple glitter from WOW. <laughs> It is wow. Their products are really amazing as far as embossing powder. And it has blue and lavender combined together. And I did two layers as well, painting the uh, Versamark liquid right here. And then um, you don't want to put it back in the jar if you have, if you spill too much out because you may have some contamination from each colored glitter. So I just wipe it up and, um, uh, and, you know, I try to be careful not to put too much down on my mat. So uh, anyway, it's it's wonderful stuff to have a container of it. And there you go. We have the gold on the end. We have the lavender blue and the silver. And that's the, that's the same colored sparkles that we're going to put inside the actual candles. I think it's very pretty. And I think it just um, is... Uh, wonderful card hat. There's the wow. Excuse me, it's regular, not detailed. And then the recollections from Michaels, and then the wow that is uh, detailed. It's amethyst, vintage amethyst is the name if you're looking for that uh, at your craft store. Color, we're going to use Zig Clean Color Pens. I love these paints. And you're just going to pick out a uh, light color green, a mid tone, and then a dark. And then just color them as you think. I wanted to have it nice and deep because you've got the light color rose on your roses. And then you have this kind of mistletoe thing, this holly, the holly um, ends on them. So I grabbed a red to color those. And then you've got the different colors of the leaves, the holly leaves. And uh, I think it just, um, it's almost like mistletoe. Sometimes uh, late when I'm editing late, I like to add the little extras to my videos. Uh, it just sometimes brings a smile and it adds a little something to, to an edited uh, video. 
And I want to thank you here while I'm putting these black lines on with the uh, pen. Uh, thank you for your wonderful comments. You sure are wonderful subscribers. I really appreciate you. And uh, here's the Irresistible Pico Embellisher in Clear. I like this because it's a thinner version of Glossy Accents. It dries much faster. I actually take my heat tool right afterwards to it, but you don't want to add too much heat to activate the paint that you just painted those lines on your leaves. So I hold it up just a little higher just to give it some warmth and it dries quite quickly. It has a lovely, lovely gloss on it. And there you have it. You've got the silver in the first candle and then it makes its way out to the leaves as well. But we haven't put that three layer uh, candle tears on there yet, like the, uh, the gut pieces. But I actually had a little bit of, um, of that gold pen got on my acetate. So all I did was take a little bit of glue. I added three of the little blue stars on the top to cover it because I couldn't get it off. Uh, I even tried a little alcohol wipe, but it just wouldn't come off. I think it was on the inside and I couldn't get in there. So I decided to just put a few on the outside and look at that. Look at our little flickering flames. They're so cute. Oh, I just love this card. And um, I like the rose color in the Prima paints. And just about everything about this card. I was having a happy day creating this. I wanted to use as many products as I could for you so that you could see how they work. And most of us have a lot of this, uh, you know, the paints. Maybe not the Prima 2 color acrylic paints, but uh, they go on sale online. You can get them at Blick um, for a reasonable price. And look at the three-dimensional effect you have on that um, mistletoe or on the bottom, the leaves. And I think it's very pretty. And then I I'm going to use the 110 Recollections. I say this in every video. This compares to my white 140 pound cardstock. I get it my especially at my, um, they cut it for me at my stationery store and it is thick. And if you can find it at Michael's, it's well worth the uh, money with your coupon. And look at that Pico embellisher. Isn't it pretty? Everything just came together for me on this card. You know, when I see something, I envision a project and I, I just have to do it. I know we're all like that. It's just like, uh, it, you know what, it just comes to my head. And the first thing that came to my head when I saw this die cut in my box of goodies was to use that flickering flame. And that's the name of my card now. <laughs> and I loved that I had the Stampin' Up! Rose cardstock to match the rose in the roses. Rose, rose, rose. Now it's time to put the black and the rose-colored Merry Christmas uh, die cut on there. So we'll put the black down first. And the only dot we needed to have was on Christmas. But I ended up using a pearl on there. I wanted it to stand out. So... Um, you're going to get your T-square ruler ready because you're going to need to make sure that the um, because it has a capital on both of the like the Mary and the Christmas you want to get them even and you know I have to make my 140 pound card base I'm not sure what this measured I think it was five and a half by six uh, the card or five by six and a half I'll find out and put it in the subscription part of the video. And then I cut a quarter in, or I score a quarter inch. I put uh, double sided tape on there. I take my Teflon bone folder, which I love. And I, it's so quick to make your own card base. And I love it because it's super, super thick. And you know I like my cards super thick. So here's my double sided tape. And then I cut that off, I fold it, I score it, and we're ready to put this flickering flame candle card together. It is longer than it is wide. <laughs> I could see that just looking at it. So it's probably six and a half by five. And um, yeah, so then I just uh, 
put my second piece of cardstock there. I always pound it down like that because you want to make sure the bottom's even on there because it's hidden underneath if you miss it, you know, if it's not perfectly straight. Then we're going to get our Stampin' Up! rose colored cardstock and put it on top of the black. And then I'm going to run this through a uh, embossing folder I had that had the dotted oval. I just love this. And I don't know who makes this. I got it at um, Hobby Lobby. Uh, I'm kind of thinking Darcy's or something like that. But it doesn't have a name on it. And I really, really love this oval. So I thought seating the candles just plain white on the inside of the card would look very elegant. So um, I cut the edges nicely so it was all even around the embossed uh, portion of the cardstock. I'm adding super thick double-sided tape. You want it really sticky. Then we take the backing off and we're going to seat it on that beautiful white cardstock. And uh, it's really sticky. Yes, our little bird. Look at him. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. And uh, now we put the black down with just a little white edge. And I love this embossing folder. I wish I knew the name of it. And then I'm going to make a matching envelope, but not in this video because this video is quite long. But I will do a video on the actual... Um, envelope that I make for this and so I need some of this uh, leaves these leaves and then I use a 1 8 hole punch with my basil uh, basil um, basil is what you eat right it's a spice it's basil cardstock I punched out the little wee uh, holly uh, buds and that will be for the actual envelope next and now I'm going to seat some double-sided tape and we're almost finished, my friends. Thank you so much for letting me spend this much time with you. I know it's a little long, but I did my best to get it uh, edited. Let me say edited uh, down to a decent uh, time for you. And uh, yeah, I'm growing flowers right there beside my sprigs, <laughs> my leaves. And then you're going to add some glue to the back of this um, candle die. And we're going to seat it right inside the oval. Isn't that pretty? That would make a card, an easy Christmas card in itself if you use that as the front. Oh, hi. Yes. Tap, tap, tap. I'm taking all of the uh, glue off. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't care how old you are. You still like a little silliness, don't we? Okay, so now we're going to seat this. Uh, I was thinking to put the holly sprig sticking out, but I thought it took away from the classy look of the card, so I, t I left it for the envelope. And now some more double-sided tape. This is one inch, and we're going to take that off. We're going to put it on the outside, and uh, we're going to proceed to finish this card. Can you believe it? We're almost finished. Now for the front. We're going to put that beautiful rose cardstock on there and then we're going to seat the black and then we're going to add the wonderful shaker on the top with those flickering flames. I had so much fun, I can't even tell you, making this card. And I like cards that have detail and you use, uh, you know, a few uh, different products that you don't use very often like the acrylic uh, Prima double paints that are two colors in one. I really like them. They come in a lot of different uh, colors as well. And then we're going to seat that and looky there. I thought I would just put some of my glue down on the uh, table. Yeah, la 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 la. That's all I could think of when I saw these little birds <laughs> to put in there because, uh, yeah, why not? And then we're going to put the Merry Christmas. You want to have your T-square ruler ready so that we get it nice and even. And I wanted the two little, uh, the Merry, how it has the swirl, and the C, I wanted them to touch. So, um, and so you have to kind of make sure that you have the letters going um, together in a straight line. Yeah. So that T-square ruler, boy, that is the best buy ever. 
I yeah I put a little piece of cardboard underneath there because the white card stuck I didn't want to get it dirty using the products on there now I love these sticky uh, pages you get them in all shapes and sizes there they are they are star form and uh, I get them at Sharon's store in Buffalo and I love these corner edges they're just so classy and I thought of them while I was doing this card because I had so much uh, of the gold especially in that flickering flame so I decided in the top corners it would take away kind of the emptiness around the edges because you have the Merry Christmas on the bottom I thought it would look really pretty and elegant I'm just trying to get a little piece out of the um, inside of the guts there stuck in there and then I put them in just the two corners and I think it just came together and uh, I still have to put look at <laughs> yeah you've got the two stickles showing on the outer edges and you have the uh, pivot pen gold on the center and it just oh love this Christmas card and so uh, yeah isn't it nice and now look at they come in all shapes and sizes and designs um, I just love these things and the reason why I like them for some things like these lines if you see some videos they will straighten out a card if you didn't get your card quite straight just add these lines to it and uh, you'll be able to make the eye look like it's actually straight you know if you're off just a tad uh, but here I'm using it just for the gold for aesthetics uh, I wanted it on the outside so it just brought out the gold in the card cover other thing I wanted to mention these are only two dollars and fifty cents a package in American money because I get them in Buffalo and I think they're really handy to add to uh, cards just to give a little bit of glitter and uh, add elegance to the outside edging of any card and now I'm going to use the double-sided tape make sure my acetate is not sticking out in any way shape or form yes now it's after midnight now I start to get really silly <laughs> And uh, we need to put that, yeah, there it is, the pink. And you want to offset it to get that ghosting effect. And I think it's nice to do it this way with the pink on the top to leave it really subtle so that the uh, actual candles and the flickering flame is the focal point. And uh, instead of putting the black on top, I thought the pink would be nice and subtle and then um, we're going to seat it take the tape off and we're almost finished my friends I can't thank you enough my subscribers you are the kindest kindest people I just get so much joy out of reading your comments and answering you and I want to mention again sometimes it will not let me send out a uh, your uh, answer to your comment look at don't the edges look nice in the corners and then the gold and the black and um, then I added a little Stampin' Up! Pearl and put it down and now I'm adding an RV06 Copic marker to the pearl as the dot on Christ in Christmas and there you have it my friends there's the outside I hope you liked it I hope you gained some inspiration to uh, do a card like this it is fun, um, it's fulfilling, and it's pretty. You can't ask for any better combo, can you? And your flames will actually flicker. Flicker. <laughs> flicker. So have yourself a blessed week. Uh, blessed weekend we're coming in. Thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. I already have over 6,000 subscribers. I gained a thousand subscribers since my giveaway last month. Thank you, everybody. You're very special. Take care, and I will see you on the next tutorial. Please enjoy the pictures. Good night, everybody.